ever get that feeling? You know, like that rush you get when you finally get your hands on something new, something you've had your eye on forever. Oh, absolutely. That gotta have it feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But then almost as quickly as it hit, the feeling's gone and yeah. you're left kind of, I don't know. Like almost burdened. Instead of excited, it's more like, now I have to worry about keeping this thing pristine. Yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Stressing about keeping it perfect instead of actually, you know, enjoying it. What if I told you there's this ancient Chinese philosopher way back when who might have cracked the code on how to break free from that cycle? Okay, I am intrigued. Sign me up. So today's deep dive takes us all the way back to the wisdom of Zhuangzi and his Zhuangzi secret. I've heard of Zhuangzi, but to be honest, I'm a little fuzzy on the details. What's this secret all about? Well, we're going on a quest to see if less stuff could actually equal more. And I'm not just talking about decluttering your closet. We're looking for more joy, more fulfillment, more of what truly matters. Right, because just getting rid of things isn't the point. It's about what that allows space for in our lives. Exactly. And that's where Swansea comes in. He wasn't about giving up all your possessions to go live in a cave, you know? Yeah, that's always the stereotype, right? Like minimalism equals austerity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So long as he was talking about something much, much deeper, he was all about intentional living. Instead of always chasing after the next thing, he believed that real joy comes from understanding your values, what truly matters to you. Then, lowering a life that actually reflects those values. Okay, I like where this is going. So instead of letting our stuff define us, we define what role our stuff plays in our lives. But how do we actually put that into practice? It's easier said than done, right? It totally is, and that's what we're gonna unpack in this deep dive. And it makes me think about, you know how kids sometimes have that one toy, their favorite? Oh yeah, the one that's like barely holding together. Yes, but they love it more than anything. It's more special because it's theirs, it holds memories. There's something to that, isn't there? It's like that classic example of the shiny new toy versus the one that's well-loved, you mm -hmm. know, even a little beat up. The old toy represents memories, experiences, a sense of familiarity that the new one just can't replicate. It's true, the things we hold on to the longest often have the most meaning woven into them, even if they're not the newest or shiniest things we own. Right, and that sense of deeper connection, that's really at the heart of Zhuangzi's philosophy. So how does he say we tap into that? Well, he argued that by simplifying our desires for material things, for more stuff, we actually open up space for something much more profound which is contentment. He wasn't saying you have to get rid of everything. It was more about shifting your perspective. Instead of constantly looking for that next thing to buy, you start to appreciate what you already have, the value it brings to your life. Okay, so appreciating what we have, I get it, that makes sense. But how do we even begin to figure out what truly matters when we're constantly bombarded with messages telling us we need more? I mean, it's like our entire world is designed to make us want more stuff. It's true, it's like a non-stop message telling us we'll be happy if we just buy this or achieve that. But Zhuangzi, even all those centuries ago, he was way ahead of his time. He recognized that. So what was his solution? How do we tune out all that noise? One of his core teachings, and this is a big one, is the concept of Wu Wei. It's often translated as non-action or effortless action. Now, I know that might sound a little cryptic. It does sound a bit paradoxical. Right. It's not about being passive. It's more about aligning yourself with, I don't know how else to say it, but like the natural flow of life, acting from this place of inner knowing rather than external pressure. So like trusting your gut instead of the influencers. Yes. Like what feels right for you. In the context of our deep dive today, it's about tuning out the noise of consumerism and really listening to that inner voice. What truly resonates with you? You know, what matters? Okay, I'm starting to get it. So it's not just about owning less stuff. It's bigger than that. It's about how we approach all aspects of our lives. What are some other ways that Zhuangzi suggests we bring more intentionality into our lives? It's about being mindful, I think. Yeah. Like making conscious choices in all areas of life that genuinely align with those values we were talking about. For Zhuangzi, that meant spending time in nature you know, connecting with his inner self, finding joy and simplicity. In fact, there's this great story in the Zhuangzi secret. Oh, I love a good story. What is it? It's about this really talented wheelwright who basically gets this amazing offer from the emperor to like leave his craft and work for the court. Wow, talk about a promotion. Right, but the wheelwright, he turns it down. What? Why would he do that? Because he found true joy and fulfillment in his craft, in this like simple life that he built for himself. It's a powerful lesson for us, even if we aren't all master craftspeople. 
You're right. I mean, that's incredible. And it really highlights how much pressure we're under to achieve some arbitrary definition of success, even if it means sacrificing our own happiness. It's so true. I feel like we're constantly being sold on this idea of more, uh, but more rarely equals happy, does it? And what Zhuangzi is saying is maybe contentment, maybe that comes from finding fulfillment in the experiences and connections in our lives rather than just accumulating more stuff. I'm going to be thinking about that wheelwright all day. That's really powerful. Yeah. So for everyone listening, I have a little challenge for you. What's one thing in your life right now that just feels, I don't know, unnecessarily complicated or stressful? It could be a possession, a commitment, anything really. Could simplifying it or even just letting it go entirely, could that actually free up space for more joy, more time for the things that truly matter to you? And remember, this isn't about becoming some kind of minimalist superhero overnight. You don't have to get rid of everything and live in a white box. It's about making small changes, intentional choices that align with what you value. Exactly, baby steps. Right, even something as simple as, I don't know, choosing to spend an hour enjoying nature instead of scrolling through social media, it can have a ripple effect. Yeah. Small changes can make a big difference. It's a journey, not a destination. Love that. <laughs> a journey, not a destination.